지금부터 한미 정상의 공동 기자회견 US joint press conference. We will begin with a speech by President Kim. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to give my presentation. First, on behalf of the Korean people, I would like to warmly welcome President Bush and thank him for taking time out of the war against terrorism to visit our country. This visit is the first by President Bush since his inauguration, and it is also the first by an American president in the 21st century. It is for this reason that this visit will lay the foundation for future progress in Korean-U.S. relations in this century. During today's meeting, President Bush and I recognized that the Korea-U.S. alliance is indispensable not only for stability on the Korean Peninsula, but also in Northeast Asia as a whole. Furthermore, President Bush and I expressed satisfaction that the bilateral alliance is not limited to cooperation in security matters, but that the comprehensive partnership has expanded and developed to all areas, including political, economic, and diplomatic arenas. President Bush and I exchanged views about the war against terrorism and future course of action. I praised President, President Bush for the success in the war against terrorism under his outstanding leadership and indicated that Korea as an ally would do its utmost to cooperate and provide full support. President Bush and I agreed to work with mutually consistent and objectives and strategies in close consultation in pursuing the North Korean policy. I greatly appreciate President Bush's staunch support for our sunshine policy as well as the U.S.'s unconditional proposal to dialogue with North Korea. President Bush and I also discussed in-depth issues related to the threat of WMD proliferation, such as the possibility of terrorists obtaining WMDs and U.S. efforts to deter their spread across the world. In this regard, we also concurred that the objective is to resolve the issue of North Korean WMDs and missiles at an early date through dialogue. To this end, we agreed that Korea-U.S. joint efforts were necessary. President Bush and I concurred that continued expansion and progress of bilateral economic and trade relations are in the interest of both our countries. Furthermore, we also agreed to further deepen cooperative relations at the multilateral level, such as the WTO Doha development agenda. I'm a, I am more than satisfied with the frank and open exchange of views I had with President Bush this morning on numerous issues. I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to President Bush for the interest he has expressed in peace on the Korean Peninsula, for the unparalleled affection he has for Korea, as well as the efforts and enthusiasm he has de demonstrated in the development of bilateral relations. Thank you. President Bush. Well, thank you, Mr. President. It is, uh, it is such an honor to be here. I'm, uh, 
Laura and I are, are grateful for your hospitality and the hospitality of First Lady Hee Ho. Uh, we look forward to a, a full day in your beautiful country. Um, the President's right, we had a great meeting. It was so good that we didn't want to go into the ex uh, to a meeting room where there was more people. We had a very frank ex exchange. Uh, and that's important when you're friends to be able to uh, discuss issues in depth. A lot of times I find in the diplomatic world that people want to uh, gloss over issues. They don't want to spend much time really understanding each other's positions. Uh, because of our friendship, because of the friendship between our countries, we had a very frank exchange and a positive exchange. And one that allows me to safely say that this relationship has, is 50 years old, the relationship between South Korea and America. And it's seen a lot of problems, and we've dealt with those problems together. And I'm confident we'll be dealing with problems 50 years from now in a spirit of cooperation and openness. I understand how important this relationship is to our country. And the United States is strongly committed to the security of South Korea. We will honor our commitments. Make no mistake about it, that we stand firm behind peace and the peninsula. And no one should ever doubt that, Mr. President. No one should ever doubt that uh, this is a, a, a vital commitment for our nation. It's also vital that we continue to uh, trade together. And so we obviously discussed issues of, the, of security issues on the peninsula. We also discussed ways to make sure our trade was more open and fair to both sides. I'm very impressed by the amount of investment capital foreign capital that has come into South Korea in the last four years. It's a, uh, it's, in a, it's a testimony to a country that understands open markets and freedom. And uh, the, I, I'm going up to the DMZ here in a little bit, and it's going to be an interesting contrast uh, to talk about the benefits and the dividends of freedom. And part of those is, that, uh, is, a, is an economy that is vibrant and improving thanks to structural reforms. I assured the President we're doing everything we can in our country as well to make sure our economy recovers. It's hard to be a good trading partner if you don't have a, a good economy. And we're beginning to see signs that there's economic vitality in America, which would be good for our, our partners here in South Korea as well. And of course, we talked about North Korea. And I uh, uh, made it very clear uh, to the President that uh, I support his sunshine policy. And I'm disappointed that the other side, the North Koreans, will not accept the spirit uh, of the sunshine policy. We talked about family uh, reunifications, the displaced family initiative that he started, which I think is a great initiative. And yet only 3,000 600 families, I believe it was, have been allowed to reunite. I asked him, how many, what's the potential? What are the potential families on both sides of the, of the DMZ that could reunite? He said, 10 million people. In order to make sure there's sunshine, there needs to be two people, two sides involved. And I praise the, the President's efforts. And I wonder out loud why. Uh, the North Korean president won't accept the gesture of goodwill that the South Korean president so, is, is so uh, rightfully offered. And I told him uh, we too would be happy to have a dialogue with the North Koreans. I've, I've made that offer, and yet there has been no response. Now, some in this country are, obviously have read about my very strong comments about the nature of the regime. And let me explain why I made the comments I did. I love freedom. I understand the importance of freedom in people's lives. 
I am troubled by a regime that tolerates starvation. I worry about a regime that is closed and not transparent. I'm deeply concerned about the people of North Korea. And I believe that it is important for those of us who love freedom to, strand, to stand strong for freedom and make it clear the benefits of freedom. And that's exactly why I said what I said about the North Korean regime. I, I, I know what can happen when people are freed. I see it right here in South Korea. And I'm passionate on the subject. And I believe so strongly in, 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 in the rights of the individual that I, Mr. President, will continue to speak out. And having said that, of course, as you and I discussed, we're more than willing to speak out publicly and speak out in private with the North Korean leadership. And again, I wonder why they haven't taken up our offer. This is going to be a great visit for us, Mr. President. It's going to be a great visit because it's a chance for me to say uh, clearly to the South Korean people, we, we, we value our friendship. We appreciate your country. We share the same values. And we'll work together to make sure that uh, our relationship improves even better as we go into the 21st century. Mr. President, thank you, sir. 어, 이제 질문을 받도록 하겠습니다. We'll 먼저 한국 기자의 질문 받겠습니다. First, we'll entertain a question from MBC a Korean reporter, MBC from MBC, Mr. Chung. MBC의 정상원 기자입니다. I'm 정상원 from MBC. First, I have a question for President Kim. There is a difference between the access of evil and the sunshine policy. How do you feel that the gap was overcome during this summit? And right now, the Korean people are concerned about how inter-Korean relations will develop following the summit. Uh, how do you perceive the inter-Korean relations to develop in the future? In my view, I believe that the U.S. policy and the Korean policy are fundamentally similar, and there are no differences, major differences. We both believe in democracy and a market economy. Furthermore, we are allies. Korea and the U.S. are strong allies. And I believe that this is important and vital for the national interest of both our countries. And so that's our, our top priority. Furthermore, in matters related to North Korea regarding the WMD the, or, mass, uh, or missiles, or nuclear issues, we have, uh, our views have coincided. And during this summit meeting this morning, I believe that there was no difference in opinion between our two leaders. And we believe that it is through dialogue that we will be able to resolve this issue. And we agreed on this point. Therefore, in recently in the press, there have there were some indication that there might be some difference of opinion, but during the conversation that I had this morning with President Bush, we were able to reconfirm that there is no difference of opinion between Korea and the U.S. And in the future, regarding North Korean issues, we were able to reaffirm that we have made the proposal to North Korea to dialogue, and it is through dialogue that we hope to resolve all of the issues. And so we hope that North Korea will, at an early date, accept our proposal and that inter-Korean dialogue and uh, dialogue between North, and North Korea and the U.S. will resume. On September 15th, there was the fifth inter-Korean uh, inter-ministerial meeting and uh, several issues were decided. There were 10 agreements made regarding the reunification, uh, the meeting of separated families and the relinking of the Gyeonggi railway, railroad line. And we are implementing these agreements. Thank you. Mr. J Jim Angle from Fox Television. Thank you, Mr. 
President. Uh, Mr. President, some South Koreans, uh, perhaps even President Kim, uh, had some concerns about your comments about uh, the axis of evil and North Korea. Uh, how do you think your approach fits with and helps the Sunshine Policy? And if I may, President Kim, uh, did you have any misgivings, sir, about the President including North Korea in the axis of evil? And secondly, why do you think that North Korea is genuine about opening up? Uh, we've heard here about their failure to participate in the reunification of families. They haven't built their end of the rail line, and they refuse to talk to the U.S. What makes you think they're sincere in wanting to open up? Uh, you know, during our, our uh, discussion, uh, President Kim reminded me uh, a little bit about American history when he said that President Reagan referred to Russia as the uh, uh, evil empire and yet was then able to have constructive dialogue uh, with Mr. Gorbachev. Uh, I, I, I will believe, I, I will not change my opinion on the man, on, on, on the, uh, Kim Jong-il until he frees his people and accepts genuine proposals from countries such as South Korea or the United States to dialogue till he proves to the world uh, that he's got a good heart, that he cares about the people that live in his country. I, I am concerned about a, a country that is not transparent, that uh, allows for starvation, that develops weapons of mass destruction. I care very deeply about it because it is in the neighborhood of one of our very close friends. I don't see, uh, and so therefore I think the burden of proof is on the North Korean leader to prove that he does truly care about people and that he is not going to threaten our neighbor. We, we, we're peaceful people. Uh, we have no intention of uh, invading North Korea. South Korea has no intention of attacking North Korea, nor does America. We're purely defensive, and the reason we have to be defensive is because there is a threatening position on the DMZ. But we long for peace. It is in our nation's interest that we achieve peace on the peninsula. I also want to remind the, the world that uh, our nation provides more food to the North Korean people than any nation in the world. Nearly, we're averaging nearly 300,000 tons of food a year. And so obviously my, com my, my comments about evil was toward a regime, toward a government, not toward the North Korean people. We have great sympathy and empathy for the North Korean people. We want them to have food. And at the same time, we want them to have freedom. And we will work in a peaceful way to achieve that objective. That was the purpose of our summit today, to reconfirm that our nation, my nation, is interested in a peaceful resolution of, uh, of the, uh, uh, here on the K Korean Peninsula. And at the same time, of course, I made it clear that we would honor our, our uh, uh, commitments to help uh, South Korea defend herself if need be. Angle, you had a question for the president, I think. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mike Allen of the Washington Post. He got cut off. Huh? Mm -hmm. Just got filibustered. Mr. President, in Beijing, do you plan to meet with any political dissidents or Christian activists? How did you decide that? And what do you plan to do to try to persuade the Chinese government to extend more rights to these individuals? Yeah. Uh, Mike, I am not exactly sure of all the details of my schedule yet since I'm focused here in this incredibly important relationship. Uh, I can tell you that in my last visit with President Zhang, I shared with him my faith. I talked to him in very personal terms about um, my Christian beliefs. Uh, I explained to him that faith had an incredibly important part in my life. And 
it has a very important part in the lives of all kinds of citizens. And that I would hope that he, as the president of a great nation, would understand the important role of religion in an individual's life. That's why I put it in that context. I then segued into talk discussions about the Catholic Church. Uh, I, and I will do so again. I will, I will talk, bring up the need that there be a, um, that I would hope the government would honor the request of the papal nuncio to be able to at least have dialogue about bishops that are in turn there. Uh, I also talked about the Dalai Lama, as well as Christian faiths, and, and uh, I will do so again. As to what my schedule is and who I'm going to see, I'm not sure yet, Mike. 어, 이제 마지막 질문을 받도록 하겠습니다. 연합뉴스의 정재영 기자. Mr. Chung from Yonhap News. Yonhap News의 정재영 기자입니다. I'm Chung Jae Young from Yonhap News. I first have a question for President Bush. During your presentation, you said that you are ready to dialogue with North Korea at any time, anywhere. If North Korea accepts, then will you continue with the economic aid to North Korea? And also, in order to tell Pyongyang that uh, you are ready to dialogue, or are you willing to send an envoy? Uh, my next question is to President Kim. You said that you're satisfied with the summit meeting. What do you feel is the largest, the biggest achievement of the summit meeting? Uh, well, first, dialogue or no dialogue, we will continue to send food to the North Korean people. I reiterate. Our issue is not with the North Korean people. As a matter of fact, we have great sympathy for the North Korean people. Any, any, any people that live under a, a despotic regime uh, is, has our sympathy. And so I, I presume that's the economic aid you're referring to. We, we, will, we will send food. Uh, as to how any dialogue were to begin, it obviously takes two willing parties. And as people in our government know, uh, last June I made the decision that we would extend the offer for dialogue. We just hadn't heard a response back yet. And how we end up doing that is a matter of, you know, the diplomats, the great Secretary of State will be able to handle the details. Uh, but uh, the, the offer stands, and if, if anybody's listening involved with the North Korean government, they, they know that the offer is real, and I reiterate it today. Yes, at this morning's uh, summit meeting, I believe that I am most satisfied with the fact that we were able to have a frank and open discussion and that we were able to reconfirm that we are close allies, not only uh, are our two countries allies, but I believe that we have become close personal friends as well. And so I believe that we will be able to learn a lot from each other and that we will be able to understand each other more and better in the future. We were able to have an open and frank uh, dialogue, and I am most satisfied about that. And the second point is that at today's summit meeting, even before we had the summit meeting, we had agreed that we would talk on four main issues and that we wanted to have re concrete results on four uh, areas, and that is to reconfirm you, the Korea-U.S. alliance. The second was to fight against terrorism and that we would work on a global scale in order to uproot terrorism and that we would continue to cooperate in order to do so. And third is for the North Korean WMDs and a missile issue must be resolved. And this is more than any other country in the world. It is a, a matter directly related to the security issue of Korea. The fourth issue is that for inter-Korean relations, uh, to resolve the current issues, such as the WMDs and the missile issue, we must resolve these issues through dialogue. And so regarding these four points, I concurred and we agree, I agreed with President Bush. And as was mentioned earlier, President Bush is more than ready to dialogue with North Korea. 
and uh, that he has reiterated his position and uh, the Korean people I believe will be uh, assuaged by this uh, by this reiteration and I believe that President Bush's visit to Korea will reaffirm the alliance between our two countries and will also lay the foundation for uh, inter-Korean relations and improvement in those relations. In the future, regarding in economic issues uh, and uh, also the Winter Olympics, which are being held in Salt Lake City, and also the World Cup, we are going to have to deal with security issues, and we agree that there will be a lot of cooperation between our two countries in order to ensure the security in those events. This concludes the joint press conference. Thank you very much.